Hi guys, welcome to our Contemporary Philippine Arts in the Region subject and for our first lesson, we'll be talking about the art and its visual elements. In order to understand how to describe a painting or sculpture, it is important to comprehend first the visual elements of an art. The visual elements of arts are line, shape, color, space, value, time, and motion. Let's talk about the line first. This refers to a prolongation of a point or a mark on a surface. So we have different kinds of line. We have vertical, horizontal, diagonal, broken lines, zigzag, and more. Lines are also used to suggest dimensions and to guide visual movement. Lines are not just simply lines because they also have their different meaning. So for vertical line, vertical line signifies ambition and strength. Horizontal line signifies rest and peace. A solid diagonal line usually signifies a strength, conflict, dynamic action, or stress. And for broken lines, this suggests lines that are hidden from the viewer's point. So broken lines are usually used in architectural in architectural drawings such as the floor plan. Next, we have shape and mass. This element of art refers to an area with boundaries identified or drawn identified or drawn using lines. So with the help of a line, you can create or you can draw a shape. We have three kinds of shape. We have the organic shape, two-dimensional geometric shapes, and last is the three-dimensional geometric shapes. A shape may be based on natural or living forms. And this shape is called organic shape can also be irregular and rounded. Aside from that, a shape may also be based on a measured form. This shape, on the other hand, is called a geometric shape. So, in contrast to shape which is two-dimensional, we have what we call mass. And mass refers to solid portions of a three-dimensional object. The third element is the color, and color refers to the visual perception which allows a person to differentiate objects due to the way various wavelengths, wavelengths of light are reflected. Color is important in art because it can communicate information and emotion to the viewer. Colors has three properties. We have hue, value, and saturation. Hue refers to the basic and pure color which is indicated in the color wheel. And when we say value, it refers to the lightness or darkness of a color. So a light color tint is a result of adding color white to a hue. And a darker color or shade is a result of adding black to a hue. And lastly, we have the saturation. And saturation refers to the brightness and dullness of a color. Saturation is also referred as the purity of the color. A bright color can be produced by adding more pigment by adding more pigment to the same hue, while a dull color can be produced by add, by adding gray or the colors complement by the color by the colors complement to the pigment. So those are the three properties of a color. Now let's take a look at the color wheel. Color wheel is an arrangement of primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. So it is important for you to know and familiarize the color color wheel because it because it is a tool to identify what colors can work well to a specific artwork. So those sets of colors are referred to color schemes or color relationships. Now let's talk about the different color scheme. First, we have the monochromatic. So this color scheme involves using the same hue but with different gradient or value. Second, we have analogous. Analogous color scheme entails the use of three or adjacent colors in the color wheel. Third, we have the complementary. Third, 
It involves the use of a color and its complement on the color wheel, meaning the color located opposite of the first color. Next, we have the split complementary. This color scheme is a close relative to the, to the complementary color scheme. This scheme uses the two colors adjacent to the complement. Next, we have triadic. This color scheme uses colors that are of equal distance with each other. And last, we have the tetradic. It is also known as a double complementary color scheme, and this uses two pairs of complementary colors. Go to value. And this element refers to the lightness or darkness of an area. This element is evident in creating shadows for a two-dimensional object to give an illusion of depth. Next, we have texture. This element refers to the feel or appearance of a surface. When we say texture, it is a surface quality in a work of art. And we associate textures with the way that the things look or feel. Everything has some types of textures. It can be rough, smooth, silky, and shiny or whatnot. And we have two kinds of texture. First, we have the actual or the real texture. So when we say actual texture, it can be felt tangibly based on the material that is used for the artwork. Right, so in actual, you can touch it and you can judge it by the way how you feel when you touch it so for example the artist used pebbles on his artwork so if you're going to touch it there are some parts of the artwork that is hard or rough because of the pebbles that he used so you can feel it and you can touch it based on the material that is used in the artwork which is the pebbles next we have implied texture when we say implied texture it is a type of texture that is created to look like something that is not now let's talk about the next element which is the space when we say space it refers to the area that is occupied by an object or a subject so there will be an illusion of space that can be created in a two-dimensional surface using perspective and when we say perspective, it is a graphical projection. So there are two types of perspective. First, we have the linear perspective. It is a system of creating an illusion of depth on a flat surface. So all parallel lines in a painting or a drawing is using this system. Converge in a single vanishing point on the composition's horizon line. So when we say vanishing point in perspective, this is the point where where all lines meet. Next, we have the atmospheric perspective or what we call aerial perspective. It is a method of creating illusion of depth in a painting or drawing by modulating color to stimulate changes affected by the atmosphere on the colors of things seen at distance so in atmospheric perspective it uses it uses colors in order for you to view which one is nearer and farther it can give you an illusion of an artwork of an artwork which is a two-dimensional surface so in linear perspective papaliit papaliit papunta sa center yung things yung lines and in atmospheric perspective colors yung ginagamit to emphasize to emphasize distance and last we have the time and motion so movement movement in the visual arts can either be an illusion or an actual motion so illusion of movement is more common in two dimensional artworks but on the other but on the other hand actual motion is easily seen in kinetic sculpture 
And when we say kinetic sculpture, it is a type of sculpture that moves with the wind or vibrating with the surrounding of air. So I will be projecting an example of a kinetic sculpture and an example of a painting with implied motion. 